Hey, what is up DCS crew? It is Carlos back at it today with um, just a, a very important video and it's something that I think is lacking from a lot of EDC channels. Um, uh, you know, certain EDC channels are serious and they do talk about this, but I noticed that, you know, mine was lacking and so was my, my everyday setup. I was... Uh, I was lacking one very important piece of gear, and that's an IFAC, which is um, an individual first aid kit. Um, it's basically your, your everyday carry first aid to be able to go ahead and, um, you know, help somebody or, uh, you know, provide equipment in case you or somebody you know, or even an innocent bystander um, is, you know, uh, is in need of first aid. Now, I was trained earlier this year in first response at my job. Uh, I'm going to be taking some additional training because it made me realize how hopelessly um, under under trained I am uh, in the event that I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to need to use, uh, you know, some type of medical equipment to save either my own life or the life of one of my loved ones. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I think that. I mean, it, that's a personal nightmare for me to be able to go ahead and be in a situation where, you know, a loved one or somebody you care about, you know, is in need of assistance. Assistance is on the way, but I mean, if if they need medical attention right now and you can't provide it and they pass away, that would be like psychologically, I don't think I could live with that. And um, so, I, you know, I reached out to... Uh, my buddy Nolan at Urban Medical Gear, and um, we um, figured out uh, what it is that I was basically looking for, and he helped me create my first uh, individual first aid kit, or my IFAC. So this is my video with regards to my IFAC. I highly recommend you pick one up. And uh, yeah, so um, stay tuned. After the credits, we'll go ahead and talk about what's in it and what I recommend uh, uh, moving forward. So stay tuned. <laughs> And um, like I said in the intro, um, basically, um, I ran into uh, Nolan from Urban Medical Gear at uh, SHOT Show 2020, and I explained to him the issue that I had where, you know, I was I was lacking, uh, I, you know, a first aid kit. And um, I wasn't sure if it was something I'd keep in my car or keep on me, you know, like on my person or maybe keep, you know, something close by, maybe in my office bag, maybe all three. And the truth is, I really didn't know where to start. So, um, you know, he was really knowledgeable. He sat down with me, well, you know, we ate, we ate dinner with a couple of friends. And, um, you know, I just talked about basic things that I was really concerned about. And um, he mentioned to me that he'd go ahead and help, you know, guide me towards my uh, my first aid kit, my first IFAC. So um, huge kudos to uh, Urban Medical Gear. Shout out to Nolan. Thank you so much for helping me out. Um, we ended up um, uh, citing on uh, deciding on a, a, a kit that he has, and uh, it's actually in this pack right here. He sent it over priority, um, and I and I actually picked it up um, a little bit earlier this week. Um, and as I, uh, I wanted to go ahead and mention that this is actually part one of a two part series on building uh, my first aid kit. And um, this one is from Urban Medical Gear. Uh, they have basically two kinds of kits that you can get. You can get a fully stocked pack um, with you know the kit already in it, or if um, you actually already have a pouch or a bag that you want to designate for carrying your your IFAC, you know, which is an individual first aid kit, in um, they have uh, a pack for that too. So I told them that I you know I, I would probably have a pack around the house that I could use, uh, for, you know, for my first aid kit until I actually picked up a dedicated you know uh, uh, IFAC pouch, you know, and um, he's like, okay, cool. So he guided me towards picking up something called the fill pack okay and uh the fill pack is currently running about 80 dollars on the urban medical gear website and um so yeah let's go ahead and see what's in here um and see what he sent out uh he's he's got a couple things in here and i'll just kind of go over what's in the pack and uh you know just what its uses are so 
Now, first and foremost, he was kind enough to go ahead and send the, the breakdown with a little note uh, thanking me for the support. And uh, thank you, Nolan, for helping me out, actually, because this is going to be a huge uh, help. And hopefully I don't ever have to use this. But in the event that I do, uh, you know, it's going to be a huge thanks to Urban Medical Gear. So be sure to go ahead and check out their website, urbanmedicalgear.com. Uh, okay, so first things first, he was kind enough to include... Urban Medical Gear uh, shirt and a, uh, uh, a morale patch, which is cool. I can go ahead and put that onto my uh, my pouch, and uh, I know that that's going to be my dedicated first aid pouch, which is pretty dope. And it's in gray. It's uh, it's not in red, um, which is, I mean, you know, it's it. I guess some people would want it in red because it's it's nice and clear color. But the truth is, you know, I I really don't care for right now. I mean, it's it's a great start, and uh, I can go from there. So there are two basic um, packs that are in here. Okay, there's two basic Ziplocs that that they sent over, and uh, I'm gonna go through everything here and and talk about it. Okay, so um, first and foremost, this is the fill pack. Like I said before, okay, and it comes with a few things. Um, the first one is the the uh, the cat gen 7 tourniquet okay and this is from uh north american rescue now um this is the version in black they make three colors uh i'll get in, uh, into that for a bit but um cat basically stands for combat application tourniquet so what it does is it basically helps stop the blood uh you know flowing uh, it, it stops the bleed from you know a heavily bleeding wound and um, you can apply it one-handed onto your arm or your leg or somebody else's, or maybe they can apply it for you. Um, and it, it, it does come in three colors. So there's black, um, which is this one. Uh, there's orange for first responders, and then there's blue for trainers. So, um, I mean, when it comes to, to tourniquets, um, there are different ones. I, I mean, off the top of my head, you know, there's your standard, uh, like a rat's tourniquet, there's the soft tee, and, um, but then there's also the cat tourniquet. Now, to, to, to kind of talk about a, a little bit about the effectiveness of the cat tourniquet, as opposed to some of these other ones, the, the uh, combat application tourniquet, um, it, this is the seventh generation. Think of it as like the iPhone, all right? This is the iPhone equivalent of the tourniquets in in the world so much so that um it's actually standard issue for a lot of the armed forces in the u.s so it's like you know if it's the air force the coast guard marines the navy you know the army they all get this as standard issue aside from the fact that there's a shitload of first responders all over the world that actually use this um and and keep this in their um their first aid kit they keep one on their person they keep one in their range bag keep one in their car um you know this is a really good uh quality tourniquet um i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna buy probably two or three more to keep in you know around not only here at the house but maybe you know in my, my pack and a range bag and a couple other things and i want to pick up a blue one for training because um i want to learn how to be able to use this really well but in the meantime i do have one just in case um and you know that way i i, I do have it and i can help stop the bleed so um let's go ahead and check the other bag that he gave us it's a couple things in here So, put this back to the side. Here's some decals. That was pretty cool of him. And then all of this stuff here. Okay, so put this all here to the side. Okay. So um, you're probably wondering what the hell all of this stuff is, and if there's if it's filler or not. It's really not. And uh, I'm gonna go through each one. So. Um, we already talked about the the, the cat, the tourniquet, okay? Uh, let's start with the, the hyphen, uh, the vent, uh, the, the chest seal, okay? So now this is a twin pack, all right? Um, uh, basically, th this helps you uh, get control of severe bleeding from like an open chest wound. And I mean, it's, it's great for injuries from a shooting, like a car accident or a puncture wound. So it, it really allows you to control like a sucking chest wound too. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, a, a sucking chest wound from from the way that I was uh, uh, I researched it and I was taught, um, it, it's basically when the the chest wound is open and it has air pulling into it as well as from you know from uh, the person breathing through their trachea. So if you don't end up stopping the the, the sucking chest wound and the air that's coming in from both, 
um, what happens is it overloads the lungs and it can cause the lungs to collapse. So basically this chest seal, uh, it has vents in like different directions. I think it's like three. So when you, when you apply it, um, it allows the excess air to escape from the lungs, but it doesn't allow, um, it, it's basically like a one way uh, valve. So air can escape uh, from that chest wound, but it won't enter from the chest wound. It'll only allow you to, um, to, to get that air coming in from your trachea, which brings me to my next thing. Um, and that's actually kind of a good um, uh, segue into this one, okay? So this is a, uh, a rush, a Robert, uh, a Robert Tassi, um, <laughs> nasal pharyngeal airway, okay, uh, or an NPA. Um, they call it, uh, a, a, you know, a couple of things. So um, uh, basically, the reason why this is in here is because of the fact that I mean, it's it's it helps secure the airway through your nose, and it comes from. Uh, they, they actually have a couple of different names for this. Um, they they call it. A, uh, a an NPA, um, they call it a nasal trumpet or a nose hose. And the reason why they actually call it a nasal trumpet is because when you stick this in, it has this kind of, um, this, this little part right here, okay? Um, and uh, basically when someone loses consciousness, the muscles in your jaw um, are, are known to basically relax, which causes the tongue to kind of slide back and block their, you know, the, the, the airway. Um, you know, into their throat. So this is one of the tools you can use with uh, with lubricant that's actually, you know, um, taped onto here. And, um, you know, you, you apply it and you slide it into the nose and open up their airway to breathe without any obstruction. So the flared end that's right here is actually designed to prevent uh, the whole thing from getting sucked into the patient's nose. Uh, so which... I mean, in all honesty, it's a it's it's a no brainer. It would kind of defeat the purpose of opening the airway if this ended up getting sucked in. So this is actually a pretty pretty smart uh, thing to have. And uh, like I said, you know, you would need some type of lubricant. This is a water based lubricant you can apply um, to uh, the shaft part of the NPA, and then you can go ahead and apply it. This works extremely well uh, with the hyphen vent. And um, it, I mean, like I said, the, this stuff is all very intuitive. Um, the expiration date on this one is March of 2022. And this is a relatively cheap item, so I can always keep uh, updating it. But as long as it's sealed, uh, it should retain its its purpose. Uh, this is just a one use thing. So, you know, you use it and then you can just go ahead and pick up a second one. Um, I, I, I figured that that'd be a really good thing. Uh, to use and um, okay, so let's see. Let's go to the next thing. Um, okay, we'll talk about uh, the uh, S rolled gauze. Now, this is from North American Rescue. Okay, um, this is uh, basically four and a half inch wide. Okay, and um, uh, four point one yards stretched. So um, the S roll gauze, gauze basically is um, the standard option for the fill pack. Um, you can also pick up a quick clot or the, the Celux, I, I believe that's what it's called, the Celux or Celux uh, Rapid. Um, I actually just opted for the standard gauze, but most likely I'm gonna pick up some Quick Lot or Celux in the future, uh, since you can buy it pretty easily from places like Amazon. Um, when you use this with a compression bandage, it can actually help control excessive bleeding, but it's mostly used to pack wounds and basic bandaging. So this one kind of like hits hold for me because um, I had to learn to pack wounds uh, a long time ago, um, just to kind of, you know, uh, get off the subject for a second, I have Crohn's disease. And um, in 2000 and, oh man, I want to say 2006, um, I had surgery and uh, the surgery was a success. However, um, there were a few complications in which my wound wasn't closing properly. I had been using um, uh, a steroid, it was called prednisone. And depending on the amount of, of time you've been using prednisone is the, um, the amount of, of uh, it can actually hurt the, um, the body's uh, means of, of basically healing itself. So um, what happened was when they closed me up and they stitched me and they stapled me, the wound started to open up from the inside. And it was, you know, it was uh, closed on the top, but then a very fil uh, thin film of skin uh, started to get become more and more transparent to the point where eventually it was going to pop open and I was going to have an open wound. So what they ended up doing was they they actually created in, an incision in the area that I had surgery, and um, you know creating the opening wound, 
and um, they used, uh, I think it was uh, silver nitrate to, uh, to treat the area. And they advised me that because of the fact that it wasn't bleeding or anything like that, uh, in order to facilitate uh, better uh, skin growth, they gave me specialized bandage, uh, uh, bandages. Um, one was like a salted bandage and it was to help cure the area. And the other ones were, were collagen alginate bandages. And they were, it's basically um, collagen alginate um, impregnated gauze. And what I needed to do is after, you know, taking a shower every day, I had to go ahead and, you know, uh, basically uh, use the, the the bandage and pack it into the, the, the area, basically, like, you know, just kind of like packing it in to create, um, to facilitate, you know, just the packing of the wound and then covering it overnight so that the collagen alginate that's inside of that, that impregnated gauze could actually heal the area, which started to, you know, um, uh, help facilitate a quicker heal. So then I would use less and less each, each day until the, the area filled up with scar tissue and it was basically healed. So um, this is basically what you would use the, the, the gauze for. Um, the S-roll gauze is, is something that you can, you know, use, like I said, in tandem with a compression bandage and uh, it can help control like any excessive bleeding, but um, you can use it for just basic bandaging, uh, you know, for, for quick, you know, small wounds, superficial wounds, stuff like that, uh, that, don't, that don't need really excessive stuff. And uh, you can use it to pack wounds too. So this is actually really good to keep on you. Um, yeah, I'm... I gotta tell you that this one, this one actually hit home. So I'm, I'm kind of glad that that uh, Nolan picked that one up on here. So okay, so um, this one right here is the uh, the ETD mini responder, um, also from North American Rescue. And you're gonna see a trend. There's a lot of stuff that's gonna come from North American Rescue. Um, they, they they are a great re resource. Okay. Um, so this one actually comes with the directions to be able to apply it. And it's a four inch ETD mini responder. Um, basically, um, it's a compact sterile pad and it has a compression badge wrapped up in a, just a very, it's a shrink wrapped uh, small package. Okay, so the sterile pad itself, it measures about, it, it measures four by six inches and it's paired with an elastic bandage that's about 42 inches long. And then um, it all comes sterilized from factory, just like this. And it has your choice of both, you know, hook and loop, as well as a C-clip to kind of close and hold the whole thing in place. Um, and I, I, you know, it's, it's great, obviously, you know, to be able to go ahead and dress uh, any, any large, you know, severe wounds. And um, with that compression, um, you know, it, it could save you a lot of time between using just, uh, you know, after using the tourniquet to be able to go ahead and close up the, uh, the wound. So just, uh, an FYI, that's a, that's a great, um, setup right there. Um, okay. So this right here is the bear claw glove kit. Okay. This is the standard that comes with it. This is the large, and basically it's a, it's a pair of gloves that have been rolled up and, um, basically, uh, tied up like this just for space constraints. Okay. Um, so these are nitrile gloves, all right? And there's a reason why they're nitrile and not like latex, but I'll get into that in a second. So basically these are non-powdered gloves that they, they, they are gonna basically provide protection against, you know, any bacteria or viruses or, you know, any foreign, li you know, liquids and, and substances um, that you would basically face if you get into contact with like mucus or blood uh, when you're providing first aid. Um, Nitro gloves are actually really good for handling, you know, very um, uh, toxic chemicals. Uh, so that's that's another reason why, um, you know, these are used as well as um, they are a really good option to keep in your first aid kit uh, instead of latex gloves or, you know, like powdered latex gloves, because there are people that are out there that can suffer from a, a latex allergy. And this is probably going to be the worst possible time that you um, find out that you suffer from a latex allergy or that you apply first aid to somebody and you find out that they suffer from a latex allergy. So keep a pair of nitrile gloves on you. I mean, I think you can get like 100 pairs for like 10 bucks, you know, in most places. This is actually a pair that is already ready to go and it's been compa compacted like this for easy storing. So um, there's that as well, okay? Um, okay, so we're back to the final three. Um, oh, okay, we'll, we'll start with this one right here. This is a Mylar blanket from uh, Quite Easy. Um, 
basically it's a survival blanket. Okay. Um, the, how do I, how do I explain? Okay. So I'll say it like this. Um, they use this material, this metallic reflective material. Okay. They use it on spacecrafts for, uh, thermal control and the, the design itself itself. Um, you can actually use it like this as a, uh, a reflective, like a distress beacon in case, you know, you're stranded or, you know, you need help or anything like that. And you know, that help is in the distance. Um, <clears throat> or you can unravel this, uh, from the plastic bag and you can wrap it around somebody and help them retain heat in their body. Okay. Um, and it's, since it's made of like, it's, it's heat reflective, thin plastic sheet. Um, it's, it's really light and, um, it's great for keeping on you, whether you're, you know, it's in your first aid kit or in your equipment when you go camping or fishing or anything like that. Um, it, this is actually really cool. It actually, it says that it's, it's waterproof, it's weatherproof. Um, it retains and reflects 90% of your body heat. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that it's, it's, it's something that, you know, I mean, look at it. It's, it's just to kind of give you a, uh, a kind of dimension so you can see how, how, um, you know, thin it is. It's, it's actually just about, I mean, even with the packaging, it's just about the size of a Sharpie marker and about as thick. So it's, it's definitely worth keeping on you. Um, this is something that I, that I had been thinking about getting and I've seen it before, but I didn't end up getting it for whatever reason. And I got one now. So <clears throat> back to the final two. Okay. So, um, We'll talk about the Sharpie real quick. Now, you're probably wondering why I have a Sharpie and why it's a fine point Sharpie, okay? Um, the fine tip Sharpie is actually the industry standard. Once I, I, I actually got into a conversation with um, the first responder, like the, the instructor from the first response course that I had at the office, and he mentioned that it's actually the industry standard for first aid kits because um, basically they can write on almost any surface. Um, they can resist any, you know, fading and contact with liquids and stuff like that. And you can use them to write notes or, you know, mark important things, you know, like if uh, you have a tourniquet and you, you need to go ahead and write the time that you or and the date that you applied the tourniquet, um, you can actually use that. And that's what the reason why it's the fine tip point and uh, not one of the other versions. Um, do I have my other version of it here? Let me see. Where the hell is it? I know I had it nearby. Of course. Oh, here we go. And uh, this is like a chisel tip. Uh, so you can see what it is that I'm talking about here. Okay, so you can see there, that's a little bit easier. So instead of that, it's a nice finer tip for you to be able to go ahead and write on. Okay, and uh, write with. And uh, that's the reason why the Sharpie is actually part of the kit. So uh, very nice, very intuitive. And um, that brings me to um, the last thing that was included, okay? And these are scissors. Now, uh, you're probably thinking, well, Carlos, you know, you carry a, a, a multi-tool and a pocket knife. What the hell do you need these for? <laughs> um, basically, <coughs> excuse me, these are uh, seven and a half inch shears, okay? And um, they're really strong scissors that have a blunted uh, rounded tips, as you can see here, okay? And um, the reason why um, I, they are actually on here, aside from the fact that, you know, they're good to cut tape with, you can cut cut strapping like um, like belts, um, you know, leather belts or seat belts, um, you know, cord and clothing and stuff like that to administer first aid. Um, the reason why is because these tips, okay, uh, they're blunted to keep um, from pr basically uh, cutting the patient and causing any further in in uh, injury during, uh, you know, an emergency. So it, it, the last thing you need to use, and I mean, it's it's nice to have it as a just in case, but the last thing you need to use is your pocket knife or, you know, your multi-tool or anything like that that has a sharp uh, tip because it could puncture something and make it <laughs> make the issue worse, you know, and then you never, you, I mean, between, you know, the, the, the stress that you're going through and, and having to deal with all this and then the stress of the person that may actually still be moving and freaking out, um, you know, you can cause, it, you can inadvertently cause more damage uh, using that stuff instead of something like this. So if you happen to puncture somebody, I mean, or, or you know, uh, hit somebody with this, these are blunted tips, so it's not going to mess uh, them up. So um, basically, um, this is everything that comes with the fill pack. So I'm gonna go ahead and put everything else back here so you can see everything that you're getting for the money. I mean, you're, you're getting some serious, uh, I'll put their logo right there. You're actually getting a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Let me see here, you got the two pack of the hyphen vent, you have the cat tourniquet, and you have the S roll gauze. I'll just go ahead and put 
put that here too. And yeah, I'll put the Sharpie right here. You know what, here, I'll, I'll take this out just so you can go ahead and see uh, the cat tourniquet as well. The Gen 7 cat tourniquet. Okay, here we go. So that's basically, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you, oh yeah, I like. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so this is the stuff that you're gonna be getting Okay, when you pick up one of these uh, setups. All right, there we go. All right, I'm pretty sure I got everything there in the uh, in the picture. Um, I'm sorry if I don't, uh, Nolan. I, I tried my best. So this is basically everything that you're going to be getting in the fill pack. And the reason why I picked this up is because I figured that um, I would go ahead and use one of my existing packs. Um, you know, I have a lot of Molly gear, a Molly attachable gear, and I had one in particular that I was interested in kind of throwing this all in and setting it up with, and maybe filling up with some extra stuff. But the truth is. Um, I realized that that might not have been the best thing for me. Now, if you chose to get all of this in a pack, um, he does create, um, uh, you know, uh, urban medical gear um, and co-branded uh, uh, gear with other uh, brands like Vanquest gear. And um, he, he creates packs that where you basically you buy the pack and because he is an authorized uh, distributor and seller for those packs and he it, it comes stock with the equipment so it's basically a, a you know a turnkey setup for something like this granted you know it's it's a little bit more money um but i wanted the 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 the, the essentials to be able to go ahead and build my own pack now i mean going through the pack when i actually looked at the one that i have i realized it was kind of janky so as it turns out I ended up reaching out to Vanquest anyways, and they sent me a pack. Now, I'm not gonna go over the pack in this video, it's gonna be in my next video, but um, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this all in there, I'm gonna set it up, and I'm gonna show you what the pack is and how I'm gonna be using it. So, uh, kudos to Vanquest here. Um, I mean, a huge shout out to Urban Medical Gear. Nolan, thank you so much for setting this up for me, as well as for the t-shirt, I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, so this is basically the start of my individual first aid kit. I highly recommend you pick up, uh, you know, the, the essentials for your first aid kit. I, I know a lot of the people on here, you know, um, you know, many are, are young adults, many are, are parents. Um, you know, the, the worst thing you could do is not be prepared to, you know, uh, save or defend somebody's life in the event of, uh, you know, a, a, a response, a, a, an event that, that causes a response. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, in the event of an active shooter that you shoot back and defend your children, you know, your parents, or your family, or whatever, and your loved ones. What if they're hit? What if they're in an accident? What if something happens and something falls on them or, you know, they're, they're, they're unconscious and you need to be able to provide some life-saving techniques and some, you know, you need to use some equ equipment to kind of basically stave off uh, basically impending death or even further injury or amputation prior to, you know, the, the, the paramedics getting there and taking them away or providing, you know, first aid uh, an immediate response there at the scene. Um, these kind of things, this is the, these are the basics that you need uh, that you can start off with and basically build on to be able to go ahead and create the first aid kit that could save uh, your life. And I mean, if it's used properly, these will save a life. And now I pray, I pray that, you know, everybody around me is blessed enough to not have to uh, uh, rely on me to use these because I, I, I feel that just you know, being trained once isn't enough. This is something that requires constant and continued education. But um, I am going to uh, try and learn a little bit more. Um, this is one of the things that uh, I, I really wanted to kind of take the, the channel into a different direction and talk about this because these are things that, you know, people take for granted. I mean, you know, you have situations where you carry, you know, a uh, a really nice pocket knife, like right, like right now, I'm carrying the Williamson Copenhagen. This is the chips uh, as a frame lock. You know, this isn't uh, this isn't cheap. I mean, you can get you know the Brynite, the PT28. This is actually a holster that it comes in. Um, you know, there are a couple of things that I have around me. You know, that that costs a pretty penny. Like for example, being able to get the the holster set up, and then you know the firearm, the the, the magazines, and the extra ammo and stuff like that. You know, all of this stuff. 
for the most part costs way more than what you would need to go ahead and uh, pick up a, a good a good quality working first aid kit and unlike those things these can actually save a life with the right training i mean granted yes they can prevent something from happening and they're good tools but these are the tools that you need to be able to go ahead and potentially save a life save a child's life save an elderly person's life save your life save you know a loved one's life why would you leave something like that up to chance that somebody else has that opportunity at the end of the day you need to go ahead and take charge and you need to be able to go ahead and get the training you know necessary to be able to go ahead and save somebody's life and aside from that these are the tools that you can use to be able to do so so um i encourage everybody you know to get training you know stop the bleed t triple c uh you know uh first aid um talk to the people in your office talk to the people at your job uh, people that you may know that are in, you know, the medical industry, you know, that work for hospitals, that sort of thing, nurses, uh, first response, you know, ask them what they, you know, would normally do. I recommend urbanmedicalgear.com uh, to go ahead and pick up this kind of stuff. It's great for urban su survival. It's great for first response and reaction. You know, there at the moment, um, they use, you know, North American Rescue uh, uh, gear. They use the cat, the, the cat uh, tourniquets. I mean, all of this stuff is standard in almost all if not all of their kits so check them out uh, it's, again it's urbanmedicalgear.com thank you so much for watching this is going to be part one of the two-part series that the second one is probably going to be um, all of this set up into my uh, my, my VanQuest pack and uh, uh, the unveiling of what it's going to actually look at look like uh, you know and, and what I'm the basis of what I'm going to build on so thank you so much for watching guys um, and and just remember you know uh, no matter what it is that you put in your first aid kit, I really do hope that you, um, you do carry a first aid kit. And I mean, just remember if you EDC, think of DCS guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And again, shout out to urban medical gear, knowing you're the man. And I mean, I, I can't wait to go ahead and put this stuff together and get that training. I really implore you to get your training too. And I will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Peace.